I welcome all of you to our weekly community of practice Sunday check-in session, a half hour of Dharma, reflection, and community connections. If you are a new member of our community, please accept our wholehearted welcome to you. If you have any questions regarding our practices and topics, we are all here to help. So it is customary for people in Australia to begin any meetings by acknowledging the traditional owner of our land. So in the spirit of reconciliation, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we walk, study, and reside on. The Woody Woody people of the Darwin Nation, I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people of today. And I also pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all are. So the check-in sessions have been developed by our communities of practice team and the entire community. The purpose of this session is to develop a reflective practice in response to changes. Guided by humanistic Buddhism, we would like to cultivate our practices and to build memorable friendships. So thanks to the suggestions from Stephen and Warren, this new year, we put an overarching purpose for the first half sessions. Apart from the weekly topics, we would like to invite you to ponder how we can connect our discussions and reflections to our daily lives. So in February, Dr. Jonathan Page helped us to, get, to gain luminous insights into well-being. So in March, Mr. Joy Yu will guide us to review, enhance, and embrace our daily practices, starting from review. So let's welcome Joy. Thanks, Eugene. Auspicious greetings to everyone. Thank you, Venerable and Jonathan, for guiding us through the past two months. For this coming series, we will focus on the four hours of daily practice, review, routines, reminders, and resolve. Before that, let's settle and check in. Position ourselves comfortably and gently close our eyes. Spend some time to scan through your body from the top to the bottom. Sense if there are any areas that are tense. If so, breathe in and out to relax that portion. As we ease the tensions around our body, let's also ease the tensions in our mental space. Let's assess our fundamental calmness and serenity and allow this peace and joyfulness to flow throughout us. as we are filled with peace and joyfulness. Let's exhale and share them with the world.
checking in. We're now ready for the session. Gently open your eyes. We often hear the phrase that practice makes perfect. But my father-in-law has a different take on this. He told us that practice makes permanent. I think there's a lot of wisdom in this alternative phrase. Practicing something makes the action, words, and thoughts habitual, and at times appear permanent in our lives. Some of these habits can be wholesome as they bring about positive outcomes, while others could be negative or simply neutral. As students of the Shakyamuni Buddha and also Buddhas in all the ten directions, we make the sacred vow of practicing the teachings every day with the goal to eventually awaken ourselves and to assess our intrinsic luminous nature. Each of us must have been practicing for a long time. And when I say long, I'm not just referring to this life. For us to achieve a human physical existence in this life is both a cause for celebration and a cause for reflection and regrets. We celebrate because the human life has a lot more opportunities that allow us to embark on a path towards awakening than the other realms. We express regret as to why we still have not attained Anuttara Samyasam Buddhi or the unexcelled complete enlightenment. However, this is not the time for self-criticism nor self-demoralization. This is the time to acknowledge the reality that we are all in right now. It is the time for us to evaluate our practices thus far and assess deeply as to the effectiveness of our current practice in leading us onto the path of enlightenment. In a recent study group at Fokwangshan Euyu's temple in Melbourne, we talk about Venerable Master Sing Yun's writings on starting a daily practice. In this article that we read together, there was this quote, I read, the main purpose of spiritual practice is to develop one's power of will. Just as, a, just as porcelain plates and ceramic jars must be fired in a kin or baked in the sun to become strong, we grow closer to recovering our true self through daily practices like offering incense, bowing to the Buddha, reading or chanting sutras or meditation. By maintaining these practices regardless of how busy or idle we are, we will improve our temperament, purify our spirit, elevate our character and enhance our vitality. The last sentence caught my attention deeply and I turned the sentence into a set of questions for me. Have I improved my temperament? Have I purified my spirit? Have I elevated my character? Have I enhanced my vitality? Have my daily practice led me to see such improvements and purification? For those who recite sutras as part of the daily practice, every single teaching in the sutras can be turned into a question or multiple questions for self-reflection, which is very different from self-criticism nor self-complacency. It is an honest conversation with oneself. It is a happy conversation with oneself because it is an opportunity to grow. It is an opportunity to be a better person, an opportunity to influence our environment to be better. So for this week, our focus is to share our review of our own daily practices. Instead of starting the sharing with self-condemnation on the lack of practice or whatsoever, 
Let's focus on what's more and good things that we are doing right now and would like to do more. What's more and not so good things that we like to stop doing? What are the good things that we have not done and would like to start doing? Let's start the conversation driven by a growth mindset and not a fixed mindset or a negative mindset. Over to Yijin. Okay. Thank you, Joey, for reminding us the purpose of daily practice and raising up such compassionate questions for us to reflect. Now, we are going to be placed in groups of three to four to share and discuss. So in the discussion, we do recommend you spending some time to get to know about each other and then discussing our questions. There will be some Zoom notifications to guide you, but feel free to light the flow of your discussions to guide you. Our sessions are guided by Meta, which is unconditional love and kindness for all sentient beings. Let's use these breakout sessions to express and receive loving kindness to and from one another and take time to pause, share, and listen. We will also ask you to share some of your findings with the larger group at the end of the breakout session. So now, let's go to our breakout rooms for rich and nourishing discussions. See you all back in 15 minutes. I think we have everyone back. Fantastic. Now it's time to exercise your fingers. Click on the chat button somewhere located at the bottom. Go to type message here and blast out your wisdom. Let your wisdom float the virtual space. While we're waiting, um, I think our group talk about how the lack of practice make things not permanent and you start to lose the stuff that you once had it before. So Rita was pointing out that um, and Liam was sharing about how the various spectrum of the teachings, some parts that resonated more with him and some parts that he feel, uh, I mean, the parts that is more comfortable with him, how that helps him in his journey. Peter, don't sweat the small things. The Dharma is not predestined, so there's no need to fear failure or mistakes. Early morning routines are important to help us settle for the day. Chanting, exercising, for example. Gaining knowledge at our own pace is one good thing that we can do for ourselves so that we can be of benefit to self and others. Good morning and have a wonderful day ahead from Lai Chin. Wonderful. Let's, you can print that out and put on the bathroom mirror and every time you just say that to yourself, that's pretty and empowering. Practice is spiritual, not religious. It transcends all belief systems and can motivate all people everywhere. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. And that self-reflection is something that cuts across all boundaries. All right, just keep going. Keep blasting your wisdom into the chat space and then team Yijin, Xiaomeng and so on will turn that blast of wisdom into powerful blasts in the social media. Uh, daily conversations with Guan Yin Bodhisattva, 24-7 friend. Now, Cindy, you've got to tell us that later, what kind of conversations you're having with Guan Yin Bodhisattva. I'm very interested to know about that. All right. Um, Ichin, back to the screen, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Joey, and thank you, everyone. We really hope the check-in session was helpful to you. And we hope you experience the unconditional love and compassion of this community. But for anyone who might be experiencing a greater need than what today could meet, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And you can also reach out to the professional organizations on the screen. So thanks to Samo for the amazing idea of linking the second hour on routine to chapter 14 of the Avatamsaka Sutra. Uh, Samo and Joey would like to invite you for a recitation session of the Purifying Practices chapter in the Sutra. It's from 10.15 to 10.45 on next su uh, Sunday, uh, right before the check-in session and with the same Zoom link. So please join them for recite this amazing Sutra to purify our daily routines. 
Uh, and also thanks to uh, Joey Lam and Salmon for the amazing idea and effort to create a journal for us to enhance daily practices. Uh, so now I would like to invite Lam or Salmon to briefly introduce this amazing idea. Thank you, Yijun. Um, yeah, so we have a four hours reflective journal coming out for you guys. Um, we're currently working on a design. It's going to be full of some wisdom from Joey, of course, and uh, Venerable Master Xing Yun, as well as some popular influential thinkers of the past, I don't know, let's say thousand years. Um, yeah, and it's just going to help you guys to, I guess, put the four R's into a context that uh, you can edit and complete in your own time uh, in a way that's comfortable for you. So it'll be available in a digital journal and hopefully we we'll get um, some printouts happening and then when we all get to seeing each other again, we can uh, distribute them. So um, Xiaomeng, do you have anything you'd like to add? I, I just want to say that this morning I received the well-designed draft from Liam. So uh, I'm looking forward to sharing this template with all of you maybe very soon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Liam, and thank you, Selma. Thank you for the team effort. We look forward to the beautiful journal. Um, and also, uh, again, a kind reminder for anyone who might be interested in studying at NTI, the deadline to apply for the Senior Education Foundation Scholarship of the second round this year will be 15th April. So go for it to reveal your unlimited potential with NTI and to enhance the well-being for the world. And as we check out today, um, let's recite the dedication of merits together uh, to send love and compassion to whoever in need. Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land and Precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, now we will have a usual post check in discussions. So please stay around if you have time. Otherwise, see you all again next Sunday at 11 a.m. or earlier at 10.15 for the recitation session. Uh, and uh, please remember to review your daily practice with the gentle questions and uh, make small progress every day. Uh, so thank you all.